Hey guys, this is Wurzerf and welcome to episode 8 of World of Tanks for Beginners. And in this episode, I will be going over artillery. And this is going to be different from the previous episodes when I went over heavy tanks and medium tanks. Um, in this episode, I'm going to be teaching uh, anyone who has not played artillery before or people that have uh, some experience with artillery how to play artillery and how it works because it's vastly uh, different uh, game mechanics wise than the other tanks. Um, so right now in the garage I'm just gonna uh, talk about what artillery is. Artillery almost always like tank destroyers don't have turrets so in order to aim at different parts of the maps you have to usually turn your tracks. Um, some of the later French artillery are um, exceptions to that, and um, there's a few lower tier ones that have turrets as well. Um, artillery have big guns, and they can shoot very far. Um, they rely on spots from your team, and uh, they take a very long time to aim, um, and thus are very difficult to play to new players and even hard to play for more experienced players um, despite what people say about it um, it can be very hard to be effective in um, artillery and SPGs are the most controversial controversial um, topic in this game um, they get a lot of hate and I'm on the side of where it is a necessary evil that um, SPGs need to be in the game um, to avoid some tanks fr from being overpowered. Um, it also um, forces players to be aware and uh, play smarter when there's artillery on the other team. Um, so with all of that in mind that uh, tank er, er, artillery usually uh, don't have turrets. They have big guns. They have long aim times. Um, oh, they're also very inaccurate and they take a long time to load. So they are very clunky um, indeed. And they rely a lot on your team to protect you. Um, if your team doesn't support you, then you can die really quickly without doing anything really at all. But with all that, I'm going to send it over to some gameplay of me playing in artillery. I'm gonna discuss what is going on and how to play artillery. So let's get right to it. All right, so I am in a game in my Su-14-2, a tier eight Russian artillery um, on Winter's Himmelsdorf. And this is usually a very, very, very poor map. Actually, um, I would say the worst map for artillery players to play on because of its um, tall buildings and um, not very much open area. <clears throat> this is, in my opinion, the worst map to play artillery on. Um, but I do end up getting doing pretty well. Um, and it takes a, a really, really experienced artillery player to play, play well on maps like this. Um, I'm not saying that I'm an experienced artillery player because I, I still am learning. Um, but we'll, we'll get right to it. So we are in a tier 9 match in, my, in a tier 8 artillery. And being in artillery, it usually does not matter as much about the tier. Um, in this tank, I'll shoot at tier 10s and just do as much damage as... Uh, I don't know a tier nine artillery. Um, it doesn't. The tier wise does not matter as much. Um, also, in artillery, uh, your main shell will be an HE shell. Some tanks uh, or some SPGs will be able to shoot AP and be effective, um, but it, usually they're going to be HE. Um, one thing I forgot to mention in the garage is that one of the most important equipment that you can put on artillery is an artillery um, gun rammer 
because the reload time is immense. You can't see it on this replay, but this uh, 205 millimeter shell, 203 millimeter shell takes um, roughly 38 seconds to reload, which is a massive amount of time. Um, and this specific artillery being as large as it is, needs to have good camera ratings. So uh, six sense is really important in your tank um, artillery, tank crew, and camouflage. Um, as you can see, you, I have a camouflage net in the bottom right here. So what I'm doing right now is uh, I'm getting in a position where I can shoot on t to the tanks on top of the hill over here. I'm going to support the tanks over here because um, I know for a fact that there are going to be tanks here. I need to pre-aim here. Since it takes roughly seven seconds for me to aim in completely with uh, a very poor accuracy of um, it's this sp specific gun, if I'm not mistaken, is around 0.8, which is awful. I need to pre-aim. And that's one of the, another one of the most important things about artillery is that you need to predict where your enemies are going to be. Um, you need to be aware of everything that's going on in the map in order to use your artillery effectively. Otherwise, if you continue to react instead of being proactive, then you will be missing shots. Um, tanks will go unspotted before you can even get a shot off. Um, stuff like that. So an, one of the main things is being proactive in artillery. So I'm finding a position where I can shoot my shell... Uh, in a good good enough arc that it will plant itself right in the enemy. And that's another uh, important thing to think about. Artillery tanks um, use indirect fire. They don't fire directly at people. They shoot over stuff. Um, so tanks like this Su-14-2 do not have a very good gun arc. So that means that it's more shallow. It's, not, uh, it's a lot more rounded than certain tanks um, or certain SPGs. So it's harder to shoot over stuff. And that's why I have to get so far away from this hill in order to get good shots. Um, tanks like uh, the British SPGs have very good gun arcs. So instead of going like this, like my tank does, the British ones go over stuff. So they can shoot over rocks in um, buildings and cover. So that's another important thing to think about in Artie. So I'm going to get set up here. I'm already reloaded and there are people spotted. So one of the things you can do to make things easy is you click shift in order to go to this indirect fire mode you're going to see in just a second. All right, see I'm in direct I'm in indirect fire mode right here. You can see that um I am looking top down on my enemies. I press shift. So normally when you press shift, uh it goes into sniper mode. For artillery, it goes into indirect fire mode where you're looking down on the enemies. And you can see the outline of my aiming circle. This is where my shot's going to land. And this is not the best way to show it to you because there's a lot of stuff in the way. But um, an easy way to skip. Uh, okay, so before I go on uh, to another thing. So I would, didn't even have enough time to aim there. I wanted to get a shot out off on that T-54 before he goes unspotted. So I had lead my shot. I'm about 500 meters away, which is a, a medium distance, but I lead my shot. He was last seen around here, and I led my shot up here in order for my shell to travel where he was. He even goes unspotted, and my shell is going to land probably right in front of him. I do look at the replay later, or I, he does get spotted soon, and uh, we, it ends up we don't do any damage. So we got to reload 40 seconds for 40 seconds. Um, so you have to use indirect fire mode for artillery. Uh, one easy way to skip around is you hit control and you right click the map. It'll skip right to where you're clicking for indirect. It'll snap this screen to there and you might see it uh, sometime in this match. So I'm trying to uh, I get some shots in. I still have around 15 seconds to reload. And I'm still staying still. One thing that you don't see me doing in this match is a technique called um, shoot and scoot, 
which is um, as soon as you fire in your artillery, since you have a long reload, a long aim time, um, you have time to move around before you need to uh, sit yourself back down. So uh, it's unless there are, uh, there's a situation that prevents you from doing it or it's not advisable to move around, uh, it's suggested that every time you fire your shell and artillery to move move to a different lo location maybe like 30 feet away just to avoid counter battery fire from uh, your enemy artillery players because you can look and um see where the enemy's uh, artillery's tracers are going and you can find them without even having them spotted you can kill artillery players without even having them spotted so to avoid that every time you fire it's suggested that you move a little bit but in this map since it's such a horrible artillery map i don't even need to worry about it okay and so one thing that's about to happen is i'm going to take a shot as t54 if i'm not mistaken see how the uh, aiming circle is this oval when it's this shape you should always put the tank you're shooting at in the front side of it so even if it, the shell is supposed to hit around here on the ground uh if you're, that's where the shot goes then it'll hit, go high and hit him in the turret if it goes down here, it'll hit them directly, and same with all this area. If you put the tank over here, it'll be way less likely to hit. So I'm going to have to take a shot, and that shot goes directly where I aimed it. Almost, just shy. And it went right about here and took them out for... Uh, I'm not sure exactly how much damage. It was probably around 500 or four, 600. And every time I fire, I press the Z key and let my team that I'm reloading. Um, also, another thing that not too many artillery players do, unfortunately, is uh, call out your shots. Um, all you have to do is hover over the enemy tank and press T. It lets your ally already know that you're who you're firing at. Um, it lets your team know who you're firing at. Communication in artillery is very important. Letting your team know when you're reloading, if they, you can support them or not. And I'm going to take a shot at this STA. So you saw that again. I was pre-aiming before I even was close to reloading. And the oval or the aim circle was this oval. And I aimed that at the STA at the bottom of this oval. And I led my shot. And that... Um, that led to a shot right in the tracks, dealing 900 damage to the, this STA. Um, and this gun has the potential of doing a 1800 damage um, if it penetrates, which is a massive, massive amount for uh, a tier 8 artillery tank. So what I'm doing here is um, those tanks on the bottom that I was shooting at before over here are low health. That means that, you know what? It's not worth using a shot that only reloads every 40 seconds to kill one of these tanks. So I'm going to find a better shot. And I turn my attention to this T-30. And I'm still reloading. I'm 20 seconds into my reload. And uh, I'm pre-aimed already at this T-30. I'm already aimed all the way in. This is what I'm talking about when I say you need to be proactive and not reactive. You need to uh, react to what is going on. So I'm waiting for my gun to reload and get a good shot in this T-30. And you saw again, this oval, or this aiming circle was an oval again, and I put him in the bottom. And that leads to a direct hit in the ass of this T-30, dealing, uh, I think it was around 700 damage, which is uh, half my uh, maximum amount of damage. And I'm not sure exactly what to do. I I have time to move around and figure out where I want to go before I reload. Um, I think what happens here is I decide that, you know what? My team has, has it handled on the hill. I don't have any shots on these tanks, so I'm going to move. So as you see here, the aiming circle is right here, and there's just this little bit here. If you ever see your aiming circle here, and the tank is right here, don't shoot. Because what will likely happen is I'll hit my teammate right here. And we don't want that to happen. So, this M103 has got it. He's five tanks versus two. They don't need my help. 
So I'm going to move over to the railroad tracks and help my team with these two tanks right here, this T95 and this uh, Super Pershing. So I'm going to use my uh, what mobility I have in this school bus of a uh, SPG to get over here and get some shots on these tanks. So what I did there was while I was moving, I controlled right clicked over here to see what kind of shots I had. So I knew uh, the position I needed to get in order to shoot these guys. So I'm pre-aiming at this corner. Look, and you see how big this aiming circle is? Look how big it is. That means I need to aim in a bit more because I just stopped moving. So I have a feeling that they're going to push against this E75. This T95 has armor. He's going to act a little confident. So this aiming circle, again, is an oval. And I'm going to try and put the T95 at the bottom of it. And right now, I'm leading him. Every time you move your cursor, it messes up your accuracy. So I'm leading him and aiming ahead of him before he even moves. And I'm going to put him right at the bottom, right under that center. And I call out my shot, as you can see there. And I'm going to put a shot right into his side. And the T95 has a massive amount of armor. So 500 damage is pretty decent. And again, I just shot... I'm going to pre-aim over here because this is where I predict them to go. And I'm pre-aiming where... I I still have three, about 25 seconds to reload and I'm already reloading or aiming where, I, where I'm going to put my next shot. So now the East... Oh, that was a Tiger one. E75 is farther down. Um, so now I'm almost reloaded and I'm going to put another shot into this t95 and what i'm going to do is i'm going to lead him a bit and once again put him around the center because this oval is a little bit smaller i'm going to put him around the center here we just need him to wait to move up because part of our aiming circle was obstructed but we're going to put a shot Enemy armor is destroyed. presumably right on top of him and destroy that t95 now we're reloading again. Let my team know they were reloading. And we're just going to see if we can get another shot, maybe. So that E75 is rushing that Serpa Pershing. Serpa Pershing doesn't look like he's going anywhere. It's, it's, uh, we might not get, a, not get a shot on the Super Pershing, but we're aiming at him anyways. So let's see if we can get the shot. 400 meters is very... Um, very close. Another thing that I completely forgot to mention this entire video <laughs> is that uh, you have to take into account shell speed. Um, Himmelsdorf is not the largest map, um, but certain maps um, at ranges of 1,000 meters, 900 to 1,000 meters, it takes a, a significant amount of time for your artillery shell to f um, fly and hit your target. At 400 meters, it's uh, around like a second and a half at a thousand meters it could take five seconds for your shell to hit um so you need to make sure and take that into account but he's this super pershing is close and we are going to put a shot just shy of him that way chances are even if it does go a little high it'll hit the super pershing here and not hit the our e75 friend here the only way that we're gonna hit the e75 is if it if our shot goes in this area here, which is less than a third of our aiming circle. So what happens is either we hit the super version directly or we hit just a little shy and splashed him, but we secure the kill. And the only tank left is this object 704. And this being Himmelsdorf, I'm not going to get a shot on him because of all the, the big buildings. And that'll be the end of our adventure in our Su-14 too. Um, there are a lot of different things that uh, artillery need to keep in mind. Um, and some of those things won't even, I won't even be able to teach. Uh, a lot of it is going to be instinct and map knowledge and, and tank knowledge. Um, so... <laughs> I hope that uh, I'm going to go into the post game stats, but I hope that explaining or walking through exactly what's happening in this game um, will help 
um, prospective artillery players um, in learning how to play artillery. Um, there, of course, are a lot of different situations that what I just talked about will not encompass. But I think in general, what I just went over are the basics that are needed in order to play an artillery vehicle in World of Tanks. So with all that in mind, let's go see some stats. All right, so that was the end of the game. Uh, I picked up a first class medal, uh, 939 experience in a bruiser. Um, looking at the team score, I did manage to deal 3,700 damage, which is a lot of damage for a normal tank. And for artillery, that's pretty average. Um, I was, I did not get the top of the team. Um, usually artillery gets less experience earned to them um, when they deal damage, as opposed to like a high tier heavy tank. Um, like the M103 gets a lot more experience for how much damage it does. But that is because it's relatively easy to do a lot of damage when you do hit people. Um, looking at the detail report, we were able to uh, directly hit six out of our seven shots. And that's mostly due to uh, the map knowledge and pre-aiming, being proactive, uh, aiming the shots correctly with um, taking into account the shape of the oval and um, the close range that I was firing. And with uh, three splash, splash damage. So I actually affected more tanks than I actually fired shots. As you can see here, I f affected seven tanks. Well, okay. Okay, you caught me. I affected seven tanks with seven shots, but um, either way, it, artillery has a massive, <laughs> massive effect on the game, whether it be good or bad, uh, depending on your uh, opinion. And one of the most important, <laughs> there's a lot of most important things. A very important thing to keep in mind is that when you play artillery, you learn where norm or where the usual artillery spots are on the map. Um, you learn uh, spots on the map that are protected from artillery or that are usually protected from artillery. Um, so it helps a lot when you play a regular tank it gives you more knowledge and it uh gives you more perspective on what happens when uh you're playing against artillery so that was the end of the video i hope you learned something i really do because this is um one of the more um broad and the specific learning than some of the older videos um starting with this episode uh they will start getting more and more in-depth, um, excluding the couple ones after this, because uh, the next episode after this will be explaining uh, gameplay mechanics, uh, something that I probably should have done earlier in the series, but I need to go over camo rating. Um, uh, ideas like uh, gun depression and uh, stuff like how, how moving world of tanks and playing in world of tanks works so that'll be the next episode but coming soon these episodes will get it, start getting really up in depth with uh gaming tactics like hull down and side scraping and stuff like that so anyways i hope you enjoyed and peace love and joy hey guys this is where's Durf, and welcome to episode seven of world of tanks for beginners uh, in this episode i will be talking about tank destroyers and their general characteristics and their role on the battlefield. So tank destroyers are not tanks. They are separate from tanks and they're meant to destroy tanks. So the main characteristic of TDs that